Hello and welcome back. This is Paolo. This is Conversation in Artificial Intelligence. It is an honor to have you here. And today we're going to go into music, the consumer realm, and something that everybody cannot live without. If there is something that everybody in the world has a need of is music. And today we're going to look into our artificial intelligence could potentially create an entire new universe of uses and uh, ways to consume music and also audio education in a way that was not possible before. With us today, we have Matt Miller, who is the founder of Audio Bridge here in Silicon Valley. How are you, Matt? Great, great. I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure having you here. So, uh, Matt, um, you are here in, in Silicon Valley, and uh, this is a place where lots of ideas, you know, lots of development uh, and so on. So, so far, what has influenced you uh, to get into AI? Was it uh, Silicon Valley or was it your passion for music? Where did the choice come from? Yeah, you know, it's a combination of two things. You know, I spent 10 years as a professional musician in Los Angeles um, and so understood the process of making music and writing songs. Um, but I've also run a um, software company for the last eight years and have watched how things have progressed. Um, AI is such an exciting field right now and seeing the possibilities actually come to life. It's something people have talked about for a long time, but it feels like we're finally hitting a tipping point where it's becoming a reality in a lot of senses and it's becoming more, I guess, commercially viable and has more use cases for the end user. So having my passion for music, um, understanding what songwriters want and uh, building a tool that can help them uh, made me realize that AI could even help them even further and enhance the, the creative process even greater than, than it has ever been before in the past. We had you going from the media industry in Los Angeles, coming all the way up here in, in Northern California and, and experiencing the tech industry. So at, at a personal level, what, what's different between the two and what they enable you to do here and there? Yeah, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a really interesting question because as we've been building out this product, we constantly asking ourselves, are we a music product? Are we a tech product? Or are we a little bit of both? You know, there, there's... A lot of similarities, a lot of creativity and a lot of similarities between the two industries. But at the same time, I think that the tech industry has been really exciting in the sense that I feel that people in the tech industry can see much further ahead than any industry, not just the music industry, but all the other industries that I've ever kind of been around or that I've had friends in. It's what, what are the possibilities for the future uh, and how far can we push this thing and what is, how bright can the future be if we work on technology? And so that to me is the biggest difference. Not to say that music is not forward thinking, but tech is so much more forward thinking than everything else that it's been exciting to be a part of that. And it's really what drew me up to the Bay Area to be um, you know, involved in, in tech and, and software. What it is that you envision with this product that you're bringing to light? In, in, our, in my experience, the software uh, and the industry standard tools right now in the music business are very much behind the curve. Um, there's been these tools that have been um, standard for years that people have just gotten used to. And I think you see that in most industries and it's particularly relevant in the music business where you've got these tools that are clunky and expensive, or on the other hand, you've got these really simple tools that are almost too simple. And I think that, you know, by building a tool that uh, not only has got a great user experience, um, but leverages artificial intelligence to help sort of guide the creative process, we can really take the software that people are using to create music that everybody's listening to around the world to the next level and, and into sort of the future here or into the modern age. A big part of our mission is to understand the pain points of the songwriters and the musicians that are out there right now. And we've talked to a lot of them and it's pretty uh, ubiquitous. Um, almost all of them say that a lot of the tools are, are just too complicated to use, particularly for people that maybe aren't professionals and, and don't have a lot of experience in the field. So you know, what we're trying to do is simplify the process without losing the power of the software that people are using. So you are trying to work in the realm of those who are producing songs. Of course, on one end of the industry, there are all the famous guys and girls who I presume have all the resources. On the other end of the spectrum, there are the amateurs, and then there is everything in between. Can you help our audience understand a little bit how all these things in between work and how is your solution helping that process? Everybody's got the same amount of time, regardless of how much money you've got. And I think that's one of the things that we're trying to solve is that, you know, I heard an interview with Lady Gaga, she was on the Howard Stern show, and she was talking about a song that had gone number one called Edge of Glory. And she was 
talking to him on the show and she, sh she played the demo of that song. She recorded that demo on the voice memo app on her iPhone. So just like I had done when I was living in LA or all my friends were doing, the top artists in the world was using the voice memo app on their phone. And so that I'd already kind of been thinking about this idea. And that was one of these moments where I was like, wow, well, she had the idea, but she couldn't do anything with that idea once she had it on their voice memo. She couldn't add other tracks to it. She couldn't bring her collaborators in. She was just sitting there with this thing and then she had to transfer it to other software and get into her studio or whatever it was. And so what we're working on and what we're doing right now is, is creating a tool where it's a bridge between that simple uh, piece of software that helps you capture the idea that you have and the big, clunky, complicated, expensive piece of software that helps you realize the full potential of that idea. Right now, you've got tools like uh, the Voice Memo app on your phone, obviously, is a big one that I keep talking about, but that's the simple version, and that's great for what it is, but it doesn't have many features. And then on the more complex side, you have things like Pro Tools and Logic, uh, and even GarageBand to some degree. You know, Pro Tools reference guide, they're just documentation on how to use the program is 52 chapters long. It's 1,200 pages long. Like, it's unbelievable for just creating a song. And so there's got to be something in between. And, and that's exactly what we're going after. And, and our thought is that everybody's already got a phone. It's already in their pocket. So why not take advantage of the power that they have already in their pocket and just create the software that can enable them to see their creation to fruition? You know? We want to basically enable the world there to be musicians and uh, create songs with their, uh, with their mobile phone. Help us understand really what it takes. So I have here my iPhone and suppose that I start to sing and I record a, a three minutes uh, stuff. So what is has to happen for that thing to become music? Yeah, right now, you know, our, the people that have been attracted to the app so far um, are current songwriters. Um, we do believe that people that are not songwriters yet but have an interest in it, will, this will be a tool that will make it much more easy for them to get involved. But right now, you know, the people that we're working with are songwriters that are currently in the industry, writing songs, giving them to artists or recording them themselves. But the pro there's a lot of pain in that uh, songwriting process right now. So, you know, eventually we can get to a point where you could make an entire full professional recording on your phone. The people that we're working with right now is the songwriters understanding where their pain points lie, what software they're currently using, where the deficiencies are in that software, and then trying to, you know, make that process much better and, and continue to move the ball forward um, for them. How many people have this passion to, to really go all the way through writing songs and where, they, where are they? Yeah, so they, you know, it's, it's, it's traditionally been a tough question to answer, but there's some things that we can look at to give us an idea. So um, first off, uh, we have an, an office in Nashville and Nashville is Music City and it's, it's the songwriting capital of the world. It's where all the songwriters are specifically. You know, you've got LA and New York, we have a lot of artists, but Nashville is where the songwriters are. There are a lot of people who just write songs. They don't perform, they're not artists, they don't release albums, they write songs for other people. And Nashville is the town for that. And so our office there, uh, we work out of and we go out to, they have you know, a lot of songwriting circles and songwriting um, meetups and uh, just general nights where songwriters will perform their songs, even though they maybe aren't the ultimate artist that's gonna be recording it. Uh, and so you know, in that town alone, there's tens of thousands of people doing that every day. You can't walk down the street without meeting a songwriter. So that's sort of where a lot of the best are centralized. But around the country, you know, we're, we're in the millions. There's um, organizations like ASCAP and BMI and CSAC that are, they're called pros. Um, and they collect royalties for songwriters. And so through them, we get a sense of how many songwriters there truly are because they work with the songwriters directly to collect royalties when uh, this person's song is played on the radio or on TV. And, um, you know, there's millions of people around the United States just, just in the United States alone that do write songs. And that's not to mention the people that write songs that haven't even registered um, or officially, you know, become professional songwriters at this point. We see that this process of, uh, if you like, editing the song, combining it with, with other songs, uh, with other pieces, is cumbersome, requires uh, large equipment, and also a lot of time. Why this industry has been like this for so long? Why it was not possible to have audio bridge before? Well, first off, the mobile phone is the biggest thing, I think, is that you just, people didn't have that computing power in their pocket, you know, uh, initially. But in the, the other things are, you know, number one, recording equipment used to be a lot more expensive. People are able to do home, have home recording studios now um, for much cheaper. And so we're just taking it to the logical next step. You know, you go from a professional recording studio, you shrink it down to your home studio. Why not shrink it down to a phone? Because you can. 
And then, you know, the other barrier there is that there's a gap in knowledge. You know, people, even to this day, really, to be an engineer, to get a good sounding recording, if you're trying to put together a demo, needs to have a knowledge on the software that's being used. I mean, Pro Tools is a good example of a, a piece of software that, I mean, they literally have certification courses that take weeks, uh, if not months, to learn to become officially certified in this program. And so I think with access to knowledge, the sort of decreasing cost in the hardware and the software, we're, we're finally, we're moving to a place where everything is starting to converge and, and can be shrunk down and powerful enough to be sitting inside your phone directly. I think that's a, a very interesting piece of uh, insight, if you like, because we have seen this trend of uh, computation capabilities going down in cost in, in a variety of industries. So how does artificial intelligence really play a role here? The, the simplest way to describe it is if you can imagine an audio engineer in a studio. So people that don't spend time in studios, I'll explain what they do. There's a person that sits behind the board where it's got all the sliders that you see when you watch videos of people in a recording studio. And that person is responsible uh, most of the time for setting up microphones, getting good tones on your recording, being able to adjust the levels. I mean, and just be a human being in the room that helps to give uh, advice or feedback from a third party perspective. So for example, you are singing in a booth. An audio engineer can sit there with their eyes and their ears. They know, okay, I'm recording a vocal track. And then if you sing and you're off pitch, they can say, okay, well, we can either use auto tune to get you in tune, or we can tell you to t do another take. For us, artificial intelligence replaces that role of the audio engineer. We can do audio recognition to understand what it is that's being recorded. We can understand if it's on pitch or not, and be able to suggest maybe either automatically apply auto tune or um, ask you to do a another take if um, it's a good suggestion. Uh, and on top of a bunch of other parameters, so understanding the key of the song. Um, which might even be beyond you know, the capabilities of an audio engineer, uh, understanding the beats per minute, understanding the mood of the song, so on and so forth. Uh, and so if you can understand all of these things, you can then make relevant suggestions to the user and guide them through the process without having to pay uh, for the studio time or for these you know, expensive engineers. Um, that's not to say that the engineers won't still have a role. Uh, they, they still will in this process, but the tedious part of their jobs can be replaced uh, through artificial intelligence. The fact that now we make it easier to create music, does it imply that more people will create music? I would say so. The example I always use is Instagram. Think about professional photography before Instagram. There, it costs a lot to buy an SLR camera, understand how to use it, go out and take the pictures. The people at Instagram and, and other companies at the time figured out that simple, feature, simple filters, simple effects, can make your picture look that much better. And in turn, the ecosystem saw the power of that. And you saw that Apple was building better cameras in their phones. And now to be a quote unquote professional photographer doesn't necessarily require school, doesn't necessarily require uh, expensive camera. Uh, of course, it op and it opened up uh, this community to a lot of other people. Now that's not to say that, you know, you're not still gonna have that sort of bell curve where the, the very top best photographers are, are still a small portion of it, but it opens it up to more people to have the option to understand that industry and, and maybe find a passion for something that they normally wouldn't have had access to in the past. All right, so basically for our audience, we're talking here to the founder of the uh, Musigram uh, the, of the future, basically. Do you think that this is going to stand behind the creation of music? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm an audiophile myself, so I use Audible all the time. I listen to podcasts all the time. I listen to music all the time. And so I think beyond music, you can apply the algorithms to podcasts, audiobooks, um, to recognize you know, what people are listening to and what they're doing. I think in an even broader sense, though, um, with the growth of the IoT devices, Alexas and, and, and series and, and things of that nature, they're using audio recognition, obviously, to make decisions and understand what's going on in their surroundings. And so I think if you can better recognize what the contents of a signal coming into a device contains, there's so many more applications that can happen. And, and I'll, I'll leave that to the world to figure out, but if we can build the algorithms that can make those determinations, I think that there's a lot of applications beyond just music. I like to take your take, not so much on technology, but on the user behavior. So one of the things that I open the conversation with is everybody needs music. How do you expect the user will react to this new wave of technology around audio? 
to your point, it's, it's a, a way we connect with the world that hasn't been fully you know, realized in technology yet and focused on in technology. And so it's a new way to connect. I mean, if we just stick with the music and the songwriting right now beyond you know, ignoring sort of the broader uh, context of what this could do, you know, for me, just co-writing with other people and getting their perspective on the world and working together with them uh, was such a valuable experience for me as a human being. And I think that if there's tools out there that can enable people who are interested in music to connect with other people that are interested in music, interested in creating music, I should say, you'll have these, these connections that people aren't having. You know, you, you talk about, people talk about Facebook and Instagram and social media connecting people, but they're connecting them on, you know, a visual text-based level to actually create something together, to create a song um, that's born out of maybe an emotional experience from somebody and for having somebody collaborate with the other person on that is, is, is a sort of a paradigm that we don't have in our day-to-day -day lives. And it's something that I crave a lot after I've gone through it a couple of times and a lot of people have not had that experience. So I think just from a, a human connection standpoint, uh, it's gonna help people be, I think, more free thinking and, and have a different level of uh, respect for each other and, and connection that they can you know, use in their everyday life. Basically, if we look at all the video experiences that have come up out there, there is no such a thing like people can collaborate in the creation of the, of the video. So to a certain extent that we are doing it here, but it's really not on the more creative side of it. What makes then the people to have access to this technology? I think once people see what can be created with, with a platform like this, um, they'll want to get involved with it. And that's a big uh, conversation we've had with a lot of the writers is that, um, that we've had, and, and, and we actually, you know, Internally in our company, we're all musicians. And so we've actually done some creations ourselves. I think the moment that we realize that somebody can write a hit song, I mean, they could, to this day, they could do it. But once we realize that um, vision and we see someone create a song on our platform and it becomes a hit song, that to me is going to show people, wow, you can, I don't need to have a whole studio. I could literally do it right now. I have the thing in my pocket. I just need to figure out this. Uh, I need to figure out this inspiration I have and, and see it come to fruition. We just want to lessen the friction uh, for people. You know, we're not going to tell people you're going to become a better musician necessarily through our application, but you'll be, have more, more access to the tools that will, I guess, ultimately make you a better musician. But we, we just don't want any friction in the actual creation process once you get inspiration. I would say it's very interesting to see how this social uh, interactions that now are enabled by the technology will, will play out because we're really going towards a, a, a world where the real process of creation is changing. In the, in the words of a famous entrepreneur, uh, Jack Ma, it's uh, we're going to the world of made on the internet. So I always ask questions uh, around, uh, you know, big teams in, uh, in artificial intelligence. And uh, this last question uh, is leading me to um, ask you the following. On a one way, yeah, we're envisioning the ability to produce music around the world in the internet, basically with co cooperations. On the other end, we see the displacement of the audio engineering, and uh, we've seen the displacement of uh, all the software and so on. What is your, you know, your pulse about this topic of job creation and uh, uh, job destruction, if you like? To me, it's more of a shift than a creation and, dis and uh, destruction. Uh, you know, I mentioned earlier that audio engineers' roles will be replaced by this, but I don't think the entire role will be replaced. I think their role responsibilities will be replaced. So what, what I like to say with what we're doing is we're not trying to templatize this process. We're not trying to, to kind of make a cookie cutter solution. We're trying to break down the barriers to creativity uh, and, and give people the tools to be able to take steps um, that can make them better and more creative. And I think that even from an audio engineer standpoint, these things are, are more functional job roles. It's not as creative. And so to get those out of the way, to get the artificial intelligence to take on the tasks that are getting in the way of being creative and being able to use your brain power for the creative side of things, I think that is going to be the value in this. It's, it's not destroying a job. It's not um, necessarily even creating new jobs. It's shifting the way that people are doing their jobs and allowing for more creativity, which in our minds is going to create a higher quality of, of music and a higher, higher quality of output from everybody. The human creativity, and if you, if you like, the self-actualization can be taken to an entire new level because we now get uh, free from a number of so-called intellectual functions that, they are, they are, yes, they're intellectual, but 
yes, they are also very manual. Like it's, it's our intellect to control processes and manuals. So on that positive note, I like to thank our audience. Uh, if you have enjoyed this content and you want to ask questions, please comment below. If you want some different type of content, please reach out to me. And for the time being, uh, Matt, thank you so much for being here. It was a great pleasure and uh, it's a great uh, innovation that you're working on and uh, looking forward to it. Yeah, thank you so much. I've really appreciated the time and uh, enjoyed the, the chat. So uh, looking forward to more in the future. Thanks.